Learn how to make high dynamic range Dolby Vision video for YouTube using nothing but your iPhone and Final Cut Pro. Why make an HDR video? It has four times the color intensities of a standard video, which makes the blacks blacker, the whites whiter, and in general adds intensity to the colors in your product to make it more realistic. It will also provide more details in the shadow areas, which gives you more options when color grading to show everything in a scene. Here's a side-by-side -side example shot with my iPhone 14 Pro. On the left is the red wall of the Grand Canyon completely unretouched, and on the right the same shot constrained to a standard dynamic range color space. The difference is not hard to see. What's the penalty for all this magic? The HDR clips you shoot will be about 25% larger, as will be the final product. The size increase is due to 10 bits per pixel per color versus 8 bits. A bigger headache is YouTube can take days to post the HDR version. What is out of your control is People without HDR screens will see only standard dynamic range. However, most phones and iPads can show HDR. And frankly, whether we like it or not, most folks watch YouTube videos on their phones these days. Let's begin at the beginning and talk about shooting HDR video. In the background here is a great example of how well HDR can handle extreme lighting conditions as I go from the interior of a stone tunnel to the bright sunshine of Grand Canyon's Black Bridge. First of all, Apple began supporting HDR video capture starting with the iPhone 12 and continued with the iPhone 13 and 14. So if you have a model older than this, you'll have to get an upgrade. To enable HDR video, go to Settings, Camera, Record Video, and turn on HDR video. All video recorded after that will be HDR, including action mode and cinematic mode, but the latter won't have the HDR flag in the Photos app because it's using that spot to say that it's cinematic. Just to be on the safe side, check your shooting in HDR when you're first starting out. Bring up your video in the Photos app and look for the HDR flag in the upper right corner. It will disappear after a couple of seconds, but if you tap on the info button, you'll see Dolby Vision pop up. Dolby Vision is the specific type of HDR supported by Apple, as there are several. Slow-mo and time-lapse are standard dynamic range only. That's a time-lapse on the left and a slow-mo on the right, and you won't see an HDR flag there. It's a pity because I shoot time lapses of sunrises and sunsets all the time. They would certainly benefit from the high dynamic range. Now that we know how to shoot HDR, let's talk editing in Final Cut. You'll need to start with a blank slate, creating a new library, then modify it to Wide Gamut HDR. Then create a new project with color space equal to Rec 2020 HLG and use a ProRes codec. I like the 422HQ codec for its quality. If you keep your clips in the Photos app on your Mac like I do, and if your clips are 4K and or 60 frames per second, do not bring it into Final Cut directly from the Photos app. Export the original and bring it in from the Finder, or Apple will downgrade the quality to 1080p, 30 frames per second. This is an Apple issue that I sure wish they'd fix. I'm going to export to the Downloads folder so I can get at the files easily from the dock. Now we can drag them from Downloads to the Timeline. Let's click our clip in the Inspector to make sure everything is okay. Yep, 4K 60 frames per second. The Rec 2020 HLG up at the top means we have an HDR clip. 
When working with an HDR project, SDR clips and photos that you import and titles and generator shapes that you add have to be boosted by about 35 to 40 percent or they'll appear dark. First, I'll show you a simple title. Now we'll boost it just under 40 percent. Looks good. Now let's bring in a generator shape. We'll make it an arrow, which I use a lot of. We'll give that guy a boost. Now let's bring in a time lapse, which as I said before, is standard dynamic range only. Sure enough, looks dark. Brighten that up. Now let's bring in a photo. And we'll have to fix that too. All right, we're all done editing our great project. Time to export the product. You can export to one of the Apple devices formats, either HD or 4K, or we'll cancel out of that and use Compressor to get the YouTube recommended bitrate, which for 4K HDR videos at 30 frames per second is 44 to 56 megabits per second, or around 50 megabits per second, which is what I shoot for. If you look at the video attributes in Compressor, you'll see all the right stuff, but most importantly, the setting for 50 megabits per second. You don't have to use Compressor, but if you want to optimize your compression attributes, it's the best way to do it. We're done exporting, so it's time to upload to YouTube. This is done just like any other video. There's no difference. You bring up the upload window and drag and drop your video to it to begin the upload. It won't take much longer to upload than a regular one, nor the processing to HD or 4K, but what will take forever is the uploading and processing of your HDR version of your video. Shame on YouTube, there is no indication on this screen that HDR will ever be processed. You have to go back and bring up your video and check the little gear icon to see if the HDR attribute is present. That can take, in my experience, up to five days to show up. Thanks for watching. I hope this little video has shown you just how easy it is to create HDR video using an iPhone, Final Cut Pro, and uploading to YouTube. If you thought this video was useful, please click like or subscribe down below, or subscribe to my channel. Thanks again.